Let me give it to you straight about what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Culture Confederacy. Hope everybody out there in the YouTube sphere is getting geared up for the weekend. I don't want you to panic about this. This conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. And this is unprovoked. The Ukrainian people, the president of the Ukraine, he did not threaten Russia. They did not invade Russia. So this is unprovoked. But not one of our American troops should set foot on the ground in Germany because Biden's plan to send 7,000 more troops to Germany. Why? President Biden, why? But not one of our American soldiers should be over in Germany, the Ukraine, or Russia. Period. You want to stop this man in the tracks, you get on the phone with him, you say, hey, Putin, you cut it out, you stop the invasion, or we're not doing business with you. That means no trade. We're not buying your oil. No immigration from your country to our country. You're being cut off. That's how you solve the problem. And when are we going to learn? When is our government going to learn that every time we get involved with these conflicts overseas, we end up getting bitten in the ass? And how stupid is Vladimir Putin? I got a new nickname for Vladimir Putin, by the way. Asshole of the world. In fact, I want to see a banner that says, Vladimir Putin, asshole of the world. Hashtag Putin asshole. Now, I try not to get crass here on the channel. Try to keep this a family show. But damn it, sometimes you got to call a spade a spade. This is one of those moments. So if we go to foxnews.com, it says here, Biden announces more U.S. troops to Germany. Additional sanctions over Russia invasion. President Biden announced new sanctions on Russia and the deployment of 7,000 more U.S. service members to Germany while maintaining that U.S. military will not fight in the Ukraine. They should have put the in there. They're trying to save space. Ukraine President Zelensky reported 137 Ukrainians killed, over 300 wounded on day one of the Russian invasion. Russia launched an attack on the Ukraine, including Kiev, overnight Wednesday. Russia called a special military operation. And Putin has said, and I quote, he plans to decapitate the government of the Ukraine. Well, I hope the Ukrainian people fight back 10 times as hard and put this asshole of the world in this place. That's what needs to happen. And we should send our moral uh, support, maybe guns if we need to. But no American troops should be on the ground in Germany, the Ukraine, or Russia. It says White House praises courage of Russians protesting war with Ukraine. So there are a lot of Russian people who aren't going for this. I'm willing to bet 99.9% of the Russian people are not going for this. Now, there's always been this conflict, this rift between the Ukraine and Russia. And the Ukraine has experienced corruption over the past five, six years. This is no secret. But they're being attacked, unprovoked, by Mother Russia. Because Putin thinks that he's going to revive the former Soviet Union. Okay, you go for it, Putin. I hope, like I said, the Ukrainian people, the president of the Ukraine, fight back ten times as hard and put this guy back in his place. And I hope he has to walk away from the presidency in Russia acting more like a dictator, but I hope that he has to walk away with egg on his face. That they have to boot him out of office. And the Ukrainian and Russian people should unite against this. I know they're doing that, but really unite against this to get this guy, Vladimir Putin, out of office. You deserve better. You deserve freedom in the Ukraine. Freedom in Russia. It says here, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki praised Russians. Is her name Psaki or Saki? Can't remember. Praised Russians who have protested Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to invade the Ukraine, saying that making the decision to protest the Russian leader is a deeply courageous act. Quote, today we're seeing Russian people in the streets open letters from leading Russian journalists and cultural figures denouncing Putin's war of choice. Reports of Russian mothers concerned about deployment of their sons Saki said, or Saki said, during 
a Thursday press briefing, despite Putin's crackdown at home, dissenting views remain. White House doesn't rule out ratcheting up sanctions, including on Putin himself. Sanctions don't work. Embargoes do. Look what happened with Cuba. Deputy National Secretary Advisor Dilip Singh wouldn't rule out ratcheting up sanctions in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So, and they brought this up on the five today. Because it sounds like they're trying to do this in stages. Gradual sanctions. So the Ukraine should wait, what, a month, two months? They don't have that time. They're being invaded from all sides here. They need action now, President Biden. Almost called him President Putin. Well, in many ways, he's acting like Putin. But we need action now. And that doesn't mean putting our troops on the ground or in harm's way, getting them involved in a conflict overseas. Cut off the trade, cut off the immigration, don't buy their oil, and make sure that they are not a player on the world stage. That's how you solve the problem. And guess what? It works every single time it's tried. Every single time it's tried, it's worked. I want to hear what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So you can click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes. As I said, leave comments below. Now you can reach me on Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. Singh said the sanctions put in place Thursday were done in coordination with allies. No, no, no. You know what? We should be acting alone on this. I mean, we can have this relationship with different countries have a cordial relationship, have, quote-unquote, allies. But we don't need their permission to do this. See, we make that mistake, too. Why do we need to get permission from this country or that country to take action against somebody who is causing a threat? Because now it's coming out, too, that Putin is threatening any Western country that plans to interfere with his invasion of the Ukraine. Well, I say, okay, bring it on, brother. Bring it on, and we'll just see how long you last. So they're planning to put these uh, sanctions in place. There are steps that the U.S. could take if the situation on the ground changes, including further sanctions. Notice the one thing that they're avoiding here is the word war. Talking about a war between Russia and Ukraine, that's what they're calling it. But us going to war, they're not saying that yet. But let's not get involved with this conflict. Let's keep it at arm's length. Send moral support, send guns, but do not, I repeat, do not send one single troop to Germany, to Russia, to the Ukraine. Ukraine cities, military state to prevent men aged 18 to 60 from leaving country. Head of, uh, forgive my pronunciation here. Head of Leave, Lviv, I'm sorry, L-V-I-V, Regional Customs, Daniel Meshkovok. Is how do you say it? Menshkovo. Okay, I'll spell it for you. You can go figure out the pronunciation. Daniel Menshikov. Menshikov, okay. Sorry, I'm not Russian or Ukrainian. Late on Thursday, announced that Ukraine would not allow men aged 18 to 60 to leave the country. I think that's a good move. An urgent message to the attention of citizens, Menshikov wrote in a Facebook post, due to the military state, men citizens of the Ukraine aged 18 to 60 will not be released outside our state. Please do not create panic and do not try to cross the border on your own. He also proclaimed that victory is upon us. Absolutely, go for it. Put this guy, Vladimir Putin, in his place. It's about time somebody does. Now, the funny thing is, remember back in 2012 that Romney was saying, and I was no fan of Romney by any means. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm an independent. You see, I look at things from the perspective of logic and reason of the real world where you and me live. Those of you who watch the channel, we have to get up and go to work every day. I mean, these policies affect us. Why should we be paying top dollar for oil overseas when we get it cheaper here and we can pay less at the pump? So these stupid policies that these people in D.C. put in place, they affect us here on the ground. That's what they need to do. They need to come and talk to us, and we'll put them straight on what needs to be done on the world stage. And I can guarantee if they did that, 
we would solve the world's problems in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. But they're not going to do that because they think they know more than we do. Although we elected them to office to work on our behalf. But I remember Romney in 2012, he said, Russia is a major threat. Everybody laughed at him. He said, keep your eyes on Russia. He was right. Everyone laughed at Trump. Trump was right. Quote, last night, Russia launched a brazen attack on the people of the Ukraine in violation of international law and basic principles of human decency, Obama said Thursday, adding that U- the Ukraine did not pose a threat to Russia. And he's right on that. Obama's right on that. Russia, or pardon me, the Ukraine did not threaten Russia anyway, as I said. They didn't invade Russia or test the waters with Russia. So this is unprovoked. There's no reason for this. But we don't need international law. We need to follow our own laws in this country. If all these countries followed their own laws and got rid of this idea of globalism, we'd be a much better world in the long run. We really would. As you're saying, you stay in your own backyard. Things would get solved a lot quicker. We can get rid of the UN. We can have allies, uh, allies all over the world with trade, that sort of thing. I mean, if there's a major attack, okay, like on our soil or something where, uh, you know, or where you have an international incident, then yeah, all these countries can come together and they can fight against whatever that enemy is. I agree with that completely. But we should stay in our own backyard, not be going by international law. Obama warned that there may be economic hardships in the U.S. as a result of sanctions imposed on Russia. Well, there shouldn't be. There should be no economic hardship in this country because of what's going on between Russia and Ukraine, because we should be independent. We are Americans. We are independent. Isn't that why we founded this thing called America to begin with, to get away from the King of England so that we could be independent, so that people could be in charge of their own destiny? There may be some economic consequences to such sanctions uh, given Russia's significant role in world energy markets, Obama said. That's a price we should be willing to pay to take a stand on the side of freedom. I disagree with him on that. No, 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 no. We shouldn't have to pay any price for this. We should be independent, be Americans. The way that this nation was founded, well, actually, we were founded as a confederation of states, but the way that the United States came about is this idea that states are sovereign and independent from a central authority and the people can control their own lives in charge of their own destiny. They should have the right to the freedom of speech, right to a fair and speedy trial, the right to bear arms, to protect their home. Man's house is his castle. Or woman's. But this just goes to show you the mentality in D.C. They never get it right. So you have these conflicts happen between Russia and the Ukraine. This unprovoked invasion And of course, here comes the Americans on a white horse having to save everybody because people in the world don't know how to behave. Well, I'm tired of that mess. I'm tired of it. Tell these people to learn how to behave. Shape up or ship out. I love that saying. Remember that when I was growing up? Shape up or ship out. You know what we do? We need to send Putin. Remember this series, Scared Straight? We need to send Putin a whole series of films for the United States or from all these allies called uh, Scared Straight. Scared Straight by the world. How do you like that? And you just hammer him in this uh, series of films. Scare him into into submission. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button. Subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes. Leave comments below. Now you can reach me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. You know, I try to keep it real here on YouTube. That's what I try to do. Because that's the type of person I am. And in real life, I'm a really nice, down-to-earth guy. I'll talk with anybody uh, for an hour. You want to go have coffee? We'll go have coffee. That's the type of person that I am. But I know what side of the bread the butter's on. And I could solve 90% of the problems we have in this country or with other countries in a heartbeat. 
using logic, reason, instead of standing behind, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. I voted for this person, I voted for that person. Well, what does that mean? You should vote for the person who's most qualified, and the people running should be honest with the American people about why they're running. Not hide behind a particular party. That's just my humble opinion. So thank you for being with me. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country. And I'll catch you next time. And let's hope that the Ukrainians kick Putin's ass.